here we are sat in the landmark of London. Um, do you think Citizen Khan would like it here? I think he'd absolutely love it here, wouldn't he? This would be great. If he had this, he'd be moving his entire family. <laughs> and I think uh, this, is, uh, this is definitely Mr Khan territory. What he would aspire to. Right? Oh, God, absolutely. This is exactly where I'd love it. Absolutely love it. Imagine the amount of apartments we could make out of this place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when we last worked together in 2003, was he a character in the back of your mind then? Or? 2003? Oh, yeah, quite possibly, actually. Yeah. Because, you know, as, as, as kind of, uh, you know, you know it, it, it feels a little bit sort of quite, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, sort of selfish thinking like this. But for me, 9-11 had happened, you know. And, okay. and, and, I, and, and it was almost immediately after that period, that after the devastation of that, suddenly these community leaders would pop up right. on TV, you know. Yes, you think, you're right, they would. You know, as a British Muslim, we, we weren't on TV at all. We weren't seen, you know, we were all seen as being Asian. And yeah. every time you'd hear about Muslims, there's something happening in Palestine or whatever, and it wasn't. But suddenly, you know, the local news would guy would, would find the guy with the longest beard and yeah. place him in front of the mosque yeah. and ask him about something happening 5,000 miles away. This guy's just come out for a pint of milk. <laughs> but he's loving his 15 minutes. <laughs> and it just made me think, well... You know, even in these sort of devastating times, these disastrous yes. times, there is what you're seeking, you're looking for is humanity in, in those moments, and comedy is a great way of doing that. You know. um, TV, classic TV comedy of, of yesteryear is a subject close to your heart and to mine. Mm. You were born in 74, I've seen you, heard you mention some sitcoms yeah. that. I wouldn't have thought you were old enough to remember. I know, I know. Unless you, I guess you could see reruns like I saw reruns of Hancock or something. What were your favourites? I mean, quite possibly in reruns, but but because my parents were so massively into sitcom and comedy, British comedy, so I remember sitting and watching Faulty Towers, you know, and I, thought, I knew that was and that was repeated many times, yeah. but yeah, probably watched the repeats of that. But things like Rising Damp, you know, In Sickness Itself, you know, the, the, the great Warren Mitchell, you know, watching, watching comedies like that was just fantastic. But then there were some comedies that... You, know, you look back now and you think, okay, they're not, not probably not classics in their way, but they, 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 you know, said a lot about the time, or they were just great shows to watch. Things like anything with Nigel Havers in, or yeah. Never the Twain. You know, comedies like that, that aren't classic sitcoms, but for some reason I remember sitting with my mum and watching it, and I think it was the shared experience. It was as a child growing up, you know, it was one of those things that I felt I could watch with my family, and you just watch it, have a bit of fun with with your food on your lap and just watch a bit of comedy. And I think in a way that's kind of one of the motivations of Citizen Kong, really. You just mentioned Warren Mitchell, and of course as an actor, he was about much more than Alf Garnett. Yeah. They couldn't rerun Till Death Us Depart today, could they, because of some of the language that's in it or Yeah, I guess they couldn't because of the lang some of the language and references. Yeah. But I think I think so the, the the idea and the relationships and the characters are still relevant today. You know, I think that issue of immigration and and I think sort of something like Warren Mitchell, it was his vulnerabilities that were really exposed more than anything else. It was he's you know he, he felt threatened by pe people around change. him and yeah and change and and quite often you know the immigrant was the person first person in line to, to get all the blame and I think that's still relevant today. You know, but yes, you probably would have to change some of the language. A favourite and still see him tears rolling down tears of laughter rolling down my late father's Irish father's face his favourite was Dave Allen uh, now he divided opinion in, in his native island of course yeah. uh, with his tongue in cheek sketches about the Catholic church You've, you might have done the same with Setson <laughs> Khan and yeah, quite, your fellow Muslims no? yeah quite possibly I, I, you know, I, I think you know, I, I'm very keen to say look this is this is a Muslim sitcom, it's not the Muslim sitcom, it's not there to represent all Muslims, it can't possibly do that. And it's not even poking fun at Islam, it's, it, it, it's, it's a million miles away from that. It, it is about saying that we Muslims can have faults too, can have weaknesses too, and also therefore can be funny as well. And I think every starting point for any comedy it has to be vulnerabilities, you know, what are the faults, what are the mistakes, what are the human frailties of this character, whether it's Basil Fawlty or Dave Allen. But I thought Dave Allen was just brilliant. And I That's remember watching yeah. that with my dad. Me and my dad would watch that and just, I mean, it was jaw dependent. I was like, I can't believe this guy's doing it. But how, I thought how strong it was and how, you know, and how positive it was. And, you know, and I, I, you know people are arguing you know, whether he was mocking the faith. And I certainly don't think it was. I think it was, 
he was having to go at the authority within faith, you know, and the power that a lot of these people within the religion have. You know, and I think his line, and, and again, people interpret it in this way, but I remember watching with my Muslim father, and uh, his line at the end is, may your God go with yeah. you. I don't mean, know, that, that was a message to me, my dad to go, yeah, you go, and, you go to back to our life, that's what you want to do, but come back next week and let's laugh together again. You know, I thought that was fine. Um, Khan himself, uh, uh, Citizen Khan himself, is like, for me, it's like the Tony Hancock character made famous by the greatest writers, Gorton and Simpson. Um, he's a tad self-important. Yes. But not harmless. No, yeah, completely harmless. I think, you know, I mean, I, I, I can't directly compare them to these classic British no. com com comedians and characters, but it was an obvious and a, and a deliberate effort on myself and my co-writer's part. It, was, it is a nod to great British characters and the fact that people like Basil and you know, uh, Rigsby and, yeah. you know, and Hancock and Del Boy even, you know, they, they aspire to be somebody that they're not. They had this self-importance. They, they thought they got it right. They were fighting this kind of class war, which is, feels like a very funny British starting point. And I thought, well, if you've got a, a Muslim Pakistani character and you want as many people as possible to watch it, you want it to be a universal experience, then then that is a great common ground and a common starting point for, for Mr Khan to be. So in many ways it's no different to that. But then of course we have that richness of Pakistaniness and Muslimness that we've not seen or heard before, so it gives you a, a bit of a USP too. And you're a Birmingham lad. What do your fellow Muslims on the streets of Brum make of the man Citizen Khan? They absolutely love you. Now last night I was at something called the British Curry Awards. Oh, I saw yeah. you tweet about Yeah, yeah. Right. And it was fantastic. I mean, 1,400 people at this awards. I mean, it's the biggest awards ceremony I've ever been to. It was phenomenal. And you've got restaurateurs and waiters and staff and all their wives and families from all over the country. And they were all just absolutely loving, loving Citizen Khan. And I feel that, I think in series one we had this you know, there was about 700 complaints. I think a lot of that was a Facebook mob mentality. Yeah. But I think, you know, I look back and go, well, slightly disappointed that that was the case. But you kind of understand it in a way that we were a new Muslim show. People have never seen anything like it. It's, it's sensitive times. People think that maybe this is part of a, you know, maybe, you know, conspiratorially, they think it's part of some something to try and undermine the yeah. Islamic faith. They realise that it's not because they find out that their daughter loves it and it's great. Or they find out that, you know, the, crucially, that not all Muslims are the same, and I think that's a good thing, you know. So, uh, on the whole, now I think there's been a, there's been a, a, a sea change, and I actually now do hear from people go, oh, I didn't quite understand series one, but we love it now. You know, so I think that's a good. Thing. You've mentioned some of the comedies that when I worked in the entertainment department at Yorkshire TV, they were making around me. I mean, Rising Damp was before my time, but remains Yorkshire Television's best right. sitcom, I think. And colleagues were making shows as different as The New Statesman. In Love in Memory, and I was fell off my chair when I read a favourite of yours was <laughs> was That's My Boy, <laughs> starring Molly Sugden. I, I mean, come on, you can't be serious. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I just get, I gave this long list of comedy. My point was that not that, and I saw something only yesterday that Adel, Adel Ray's inspiration is Molly Sugden, and it's like that's not true. That's not that's not nothing against Molly Sugden, but I was giving the example that. Even it was the it's like we said earlier. It's the for me. It's often the experience of watching a comedy that was very that you know, sitcom has. Yeah. Even if it's not down as a classic sitcom, there's something there's something very warming, very welcoming about these big brass studio comedies. And you know, and quite often, you know, they they, they won't won't go down as classics. Um, but you know, they, they can still be. They still have a part to play, and they can still be very good. And I think that was, you know, in that time, I mean, sitcom was on fire. It was everywhere. I mean, you know, ITV probably had one almost every night, you know. And so I think I was just giving that, that example of how... Is there still a place know. for family TV? I mean, uh, do families even watch telly together anymore? I don't know. Well, I think it's, it's a slightly sort of... It's a concern, isn't it? It's a dying breed. But I think there certainly is. I think, you know, and I think that's what... I think we're showing that, and I hear that a lot now. I get people sort of... I, somebody tweeted me recently saying that the only time they see their son is when he... Out of his pit is when Doctor Who or Citizen Khan's on. Right. I think, oh, that's great. Are children watching Citizen Khan? Yeah, they are. And, and, we, and that's the interesting sort of stat for us that we found that, and I, you know, the channel come back to us that we have a disproportionate, a positively disproportionate number of children watching our show than any of the comedy, which is great. And I think they kind of, I think that's because, you know, he's a bit of a loser dad, you know, he's a bit of an embarrassing dad, and, the, you know, dad never gets to come up. And, but also, I kind of, I, I kind of deliberately play a slightly childlike 
thing about car, and I think they, I think the kids kind of recognise that really. And there must be a market overseas because, as you know, I've lived in Spain for the last ten years, and they love visual comedy there. That. <laughs> they worship Mr. Bean still. Really, yeah. Um, and I read somewhere, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're wanting to take Citizen Car more visual. Yeah, I do. I mean, you know, it, it, it has it has worked. It sells in a number of territories now. You know, New right. Zealand, Australia, South Africa, India, Bulgaria, of all places. You know, which is fantastic. And you know, and I, and I really don't mind the comparison to Mr. Beans. I think it's a really, you know, I, I actually think that's somewhere. If we were thinking about a movie which had sort of very early chats about, but I think, you know, I really love doing the physical. And I think Mr. Khan, this funny Muslim character, doing something physical on some world mission or some mission to go to America I think is uh, I think an easy thing to buy into uh, guest stars I saw Peter Bowles in one episode yeah are you and you're getting presumably attracting others who perhaps want to be in it um, yeah are you pinching yourself do you pinch yourself do you see yourself actor who you never intended to be an actor did you or set no out not really alongside I mean, these people it's madness you I kind of try to play cool on set, but I think I go home at the end going, oh my God, I can't believe what's going on. Because, you know, you just try to go, don't, don't be a fan. And, but it's difficult not to. With Peter Bowles, you know, you just, and he, he's, he tells lots of stories and, you know, you know, and he's great. You know, he's sort of, I mean, to the man of born, I think it got something like 25 million viewers, the most watched show on television at the time. And he said that for three weeks, he couldn't leave the house. And people were just outside his house all the time. Yet they only did... I think three series, you know, that's 18 episodes. In those days, it was only six as well. So it's just just phenomenal hearing the stories. And yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it's got better for us as well. It's like now, you know, yeah. in terms of getting these guest actors, and we will, I mean, I'll sit there and with the director and go, well, why, why can't we ask Peter Bowles? You know, why not? Let's just see what happens. And he's like, well, I know Peter. Well, okay, well, let's just turn him a set of scripts. If he says no, he says no, you know. Who, Funny you want, who would you really like? Oh, God, who would I really like? Um... Oh God, I mean, this is endless. Sorry, I mean, I well, I've always had this idea about Mr. Khan, now the daughter's moved out, of renting his room out, like on Air and B&B, renting the spare room out. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if, 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 if John Cleese came to stay? <laughs> you know, I mean, that would never happen, but, but you know, you, but you can only ask. But, you know, things like that would be great. But then, now we've had someone like Peter Bowles getting Penelope Keith. Like, I love when Khan comes up against those posh women, because it's... It's a, it's a kind of a real hard situation for him because on one hand he wants to be posh and it's everything he's ever dreamed of, but he's got to deal with this very strong woman. So someone like Penelope Keith playing a role like that would just be brilliant if she ever... If she ever you know, She's a lovely lady. Yeah. TV critics can be nasty mm. and some of them are paid just to be that. Comedy, as we all know, is subjective. You must have to have thick skin not to be hurt by some comments, mm. whether that's TV critics or some of the stuff on Twitter. Yeah. I mean, how do you... I, I couldn't... I don't think I could take it. <laughs> well, I, I think the thing is, from, from very early on, you know, from... Forget about television and radio yes, for, yes. for a minute, but, he, but but from very early on, I remember being called all sorts of names at school, you know, oh, okay. you know and you can imagine what that might be. Then. But my mother brought me up to say, well, so what? What are you going to do? You know, don't, don't... She literally said the words, don't let yourself be offended. And, and that's rang through my ears all my life. And... And I think it's a, it's a, you know, it's an important way to be. And then, and then I think when you, when you go on stage and you're a performer of any kind, that really, genuinely, all you can expect is people to have a reaction. You can't expect everybody to absolutely love what you do. That's what you know. You go on stage, that, that, and people are entitled to have, have their views and opinions. So you have that, and I think you have that in place. But that doesn't mean you're you're not going to be sometimes upset or hurt by by someone's review. And you think, oh, really? You know. When, it, it, what, I guess what hurts me most, and, I, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm not saying this in a, a righteous way, but it's that, it's that they can only speak for themselves. It's when somebody says, I don't understand how this can be funny or how can anybody watch this or get this off TV. Well, hang on a minute, that's, get this off TV? Why? You know, there's, you know, there's five million people enjoy Citizen Khan. Surely they have a right to watch it and you have a right not to watch it. Yeah. So, um, but that's fine. But, you know, I, I'm, there, was, there was a critic who shall remain nameless who... <laughs> He writes one of the tabloids, and he's been very critical. Yeah, and I met him in a green room, oh and he came up to me and he said, um, "He goes, oh, you know, sorry about all the reviews and what stuff." I was like, well, "You don't you say that? That's your job." And we come and us. He goes, "Yeah, but I don't really mean that. Mean it that badly, you know. But you know, you've got to give it some, haven't you?" Which I was like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> you know? yeah, that's the school he comes from. But that's exactly what their job is, and that's that's fair enough. Uh, it's not fair enough. <laughs> um, I've I don't think I've seen anybody 
reply more or get back to people who have been abusive to you than yeah. you? Than you. Uh, why? Why? why do because, you... Vern, I'll tell you why. Because I think that, and this might be me being positive or being, you know, giving them too much time, but, and it does happen, I believe it might be one in seven, you know, that's not odd number, or two in ten, whatever, that there are actually a lot of people join a bandwagon. They join a bandwagon or they haven't really given it a, a, a proper thought, they haven't heard the defence of it, you know, they've just heard from other Muslims or other Pakistanis or other people that go, oh, this is terrible and he's mocking the faith and, you know, that's what the BBC does and he's paid by, you know, an Uncle Tom, he says, oh, they hold on a second. Has anybody ever had it? And, and most of the time, nine times out of ten, I will get nothing. I'll get nowhere with them. But occasionally, one or two will come back and say, you know what, you're right. I don't really think that somebody else said that. Or, you know what, I want to go watch it now. And actually, you know what, I do watch it. Or actually, I do like it. And I think that's why it's worth sometimes getting into a dialogue with them. I, I truly believe that. Because I just think that a lot of people just go with, go with the tide and go, it's kind of cool to knock something. And I haven't really given it some thought. And you take that approach onto it, and not just with Citizen Calm, but with world events, with anything to do with yeah, Muslim think, faith, with terrorist events. Well, I think, as, as a British Muslim, and, I, and you know, to get serious about the whole yes. thing at the moment, I, I think that the underlying, a lot of the, time the underlying issue is, is that as British Muslims, we're brought up, you know, it's either been in, ingrained in us, or it's you know, in an organic way that we should all be the same. You know, all Muslims should be the same, and we're slightly surprised by, you know, a Muslim that suddenly decides to wear a hijab or doesn't wear a hijab or a Muslim that might be found in the pub or is not in the pub or a Muslim who doesn't fast and does they're still Muslim that you know it's their relationship with God and I so, so I, I kind of try to encourage this sort of pluralism really and I think that it's important that you know we've got to allow people to have their views and we should have an open discussion about it and I think that's that's partly the problem I think with, with, with that rests within people with you know with the Islamic faith that we we've got to be more welcoming open to other views Okay, so uh, obviously, if I did a show like we did in two thousand and three, I couldn't afford to hire you now. Anyway. <laughs> Is it at all? I would do it for nothing for oh, you, yeah, right, you, okay. were, you. This guy gave me my first break. He yeah, hasn't said okay. this, but he did. Yeah. In the neck. Um, yeah. <laughs> so is it now Adel Ray actor mm. forever, mm. or would you go back to presenting radio or TV, oh, or I, see how it goes? You know, I really want to go back into radio. It's, it's my first love, and I miss it a lot. You know, and it's just finding the right slot for that. I've done a bit of stuff on Radio Two and Five Live in recent years, and I'll try and do more of that. God, I love it. Um, but Citizen Khan, I you know, I, I don't want to put him to bed just yet. You know, I, you know, re I think. It's so hard these days. It's not as you know. I think it's getting harder to establish a comedy on TV with such saturated channels and everything and audiences. So certainly don't want to lose that. But yes, I'm really keen to present. I've you know done a bit of presenting recently on telly with things like the one show, which I, I just love. You know, I love doing it. Um, so why not? You know, somebody once said to me, "Oh, you're going to have to try and focus and decide. Do you want to do comedy? Do you want to do documentary? Do you want to? I'm like, I don't think I have to do that. Why? You know, just try and try and do it all if you can, really. Good luck with all, and good luck with Citizen Car the movie if it happens. Thank you very much. Do you want a part in it? Uh, yeah, if you like. Yeah, yeah. What, what can you play? Uh, What's your Pakistani accent like? Uh, crap. <laughs>